every derivative gives you an antiderivative. So when we learn to take the derivative of the arctangent, we also learned a new indefinite integral. As I said earlier, I think this is probably the most important of the three that we learn in this section, or at least it's the only one where I can give you a concrete act the cation that I've seen. This indefinite integral is used studying motion when you do not neglect air resistance. Depending on how fast we move through the material, we might actually be able to see that application. But for now, Let's just do an example. And because we've already done two examples involving the arc sign. Let's dive into the deep end with a somewhat more complicated example here. This looks at least a little bit like this. Let's start by observing that Still, looking at this doesn't necessarily scream to me, use the arc tangent. Maybe you'll try something else first. Maybe you'll look at this. And the first thing you think of will be a U substitution. You spend a little time on that. You see that you cannot turn this dx into du. You don't have the x cube that you need. So you give up the effort. And eventually, Again, maybe after a false start or two, you look at this and you say, well, we don't have a one here and we don't have an X squared here, but this does look kind of like this. If we wanted to use this formula, what would we need? Well, we wouldn't want a six here. We'd want a one. But we dealt with problems like that before when we were looking at the arc sign. That is not a fatal problem. If we want a one instead of a six, we can pull that six out. Our other two problems are related. To use this formula, we want a one here. And this five is no problem at all. This five is a constant, it pops right out. But we have an 
Rex as well. And that's a more serious issue. We can't just pull X's out of integrals. Similarly, or not really similarly, but a related problem, it turns out, is that we have a fourth power here instead of a square. This nine sixths we don't want, but that's not a fatal issue. We saw examples using the arc sign, where we had a constant we didn't want in front of the x, and we got rid of it with a u substitution. And that gives us our idea for the next step. If we wanted something squared here instead of something cubed, we can certainly take this and rewrite it as a square. Does that do anything help? Helpful. I mean, in order for this to be a useful step, we need to get rid of this dx and we need to get rid of this x. Well, if u equals 3 over the square root of 6 times x squared, then it du is 6 over the square root of 6 x dx. And now we're golden because we have an x dx. So we can convert everything into U. Let's maybe rewrite this a little. 6 divided by the square root of 6 is the square root of 6. And now we put everything in terms of u. This five we're leaving b for the moment, although we'll get rid of it soon enough. We need a square root of six in front of our x. So we'll put such a square root in. We'll also divide by the square root of six. In the denominator, we haven't yet actually done our u substitution. So we have this quantity squared, but now we're almost to the end. Um, everything we don't want, that is to say these constants, will just come out of the integral. Let's see. 1 over 6 times 1 over the square root of 6 is 1 over 6 to the 3 halves power. The square root of 6x dx 
is precisely du. In the denominator, that's one plus u squared. And we're basically done. This is the arc tangent. The arc tangent of u plus a constant. And with this very last step, we'll no longer basically be done, we'll just be done. Get rid of that to you and rewrite to this in terms of x. If you compare this to my notes, three over the square root of six is the square root of three over the square root of two. This is five over six times one over the square root of six. So a slightly different looking answer in my video than in my notes, but it is the same solution.